Now, to the outside eye, this seems strange. But could this culture give us a look into the future? Earlier from our New York studio, I spoke with Roland Kelts, Japan culture expert and author of Japan America, in hopes that he could enlighten us on what makes this culture tick. I first asked him if he had heard of this newest vacation trend. Well, the, the video game itself, or the virtual reality game, was released actually last year. Uh, the original title was Love Plus, and it was a chance to uh, virtually date the girl of your choice. Uh, the newer version, Love Plus Plus, is, uh, has been, was released earlier this summer, and that takes the dating into um, a higher level because you have to actually uh, continue to develop the relationship by wooing uh, the woman at first and then making plans to do things together and making sure that she's kept happy. Uh, so a virtual uh, vacation in a real place uh, is one part of that process of romance. Now, I don't know uh, about you know, yourself, you spend a lot of time in Japan, but, but to me, to our crew here, uh, when we were first discussing this story earlier today, we just found that to be so odd. So, uh, I don't know, I mean, you yourself have spent 10 years on and off between New York and Tokyo. What is it about Japanese culture that, you know, I guess that, that makes virtual girlfriends, that makes robots so popular? Well, there are a couple of answers to that. The most common one given is that uh, Japan is an animistic society, uh, which is in reference to the Shinto faith or the national religion or cult, if you will, uh, in which inanimate objects are uh, imbued with godlike uh, personalities or characteristics. So it's a pantheistic religion uh, in which uh, there are many gods. There are gods of the hills, gods of the forests, and even gods in seemingly mu mundane items like a pen or a pencil. And so this idea that you can animate uh, inanimate objects, they, they have a personality inside them. You know, the original Transformers uh, toy and animation series comes from Japan. And that whole idea of turning cars into robots with personalities and, and a distinctive uh, personal characteristics, uh, that's very much a, a Japanese approach to popular culture. So I think the idea of imbuing inanimate objects with animate properties is, is very much a part of Japanese culture. And then I think the, there are social aspects today in Japan. Um, there's quite a gender gap. Uh, women in Japan are uh, largely choosing not to marry and not to bear children. And instead, they're trying to sustain careers and lives of travel and personal adventure whereas a great deal of men seem to be turning inward and away from direct contact. And so you have a gender gap as well, I think, propelling in interest in these uh, virtual dating games. Now, um, tell me this part, because it seems to me, you know, one thing that I had found a little odd is that when you play this game, you essentially are playing a high school-aged boy, and you're also pursuing an adolescent, a, a teenage girl, and I feel like, you know, there's, in some way, it's very acceptable to, um, I don't know, pursue young, underage women. Is that part of it? <laughs> well, I don't know as uh, I could certainly wouldn't say about Japanese society that it's acceptable to pursue young, underage uh, women. And it's important to emphasize that this group of what the Japanese term is uh, otaku, which means super geeky, uh, usually men uh, who are obsessive about their virtual realities and escaping into them. This is a subculture of a subculture of a subculture. It's probably three or four times removed. So it's by far not a national phenomenon. But what I will say about the, the younger females featured in the game is that um, there's this concept of uh, what uh, the Japanese call kawaii, or uh, almost super cute. Um, which you can find in everything from, from manga and anime titles to Hello Kitty uh, or Pikachu, uh, characters like that, that, that are so cute that you feel like taking care of them. You have to take care of them. And so I think the features of the character design that you find in the uh, Konami game Love Plus or Love Plus Plus uh, are those of seemingly younger or underage or dependent females, uh, which to the American viewer may look like 
uh, high school girls. Really, they're just um, girls that the, need to be. But uh, the actual participants in the game of. care more about the design of the character than necessarily the fact that she may be a high school student. Now, very quickly, Roland. Um, is this something that you think is also unique to Japanese culture, or is this maybe a more futuristic approach that we might see in other parts of the world soon, too? Well, I, I guess I would say a little bit of both, because I think the rest of the world, in a way, is becoming a bit more like Japan. Uh, and that's a big statement, I realize. But I think the fact that we, with our mobile technologies and increasingly elaborate virtual worlds and our own participation participation in virtual worlds via social networking sites like Facebook and Mixi, and the opportunity to have avatars, uh, stand-in characters for ourselves. I think perhaps we're all beginning to turn a bit more inward in a way and cultivate our own imaginative uh, spaces. So I think some of the trends that you see uh, in Japan may well find audiences uh, outside of Japan. You know, the, years ago, uh, Japan produced the Tamagotchi or virtual pets. Uh, these are pets that you would have to feed and take care of virtually. And if you didn't, they, they would actually die on you. Um, that sounded absurd when uh, it was uh, released some years ago. Uh, well, those but today, did become... virtual reality. Thanks a lot.